cloud. Great, and I'll let them all in. All righty. Well, hello, everyone. Let's make sure everybody is muted. Let's just um, let's make sure everyone's muted here. Right. Okay, I think we're good now. Um, hello, everyone, and happy rainy Tuesday. What, what a day today. Um, I have moved yoga now to five o'clock. Um, now that it's getting colder and darker early, uh, I'm just thinking it'd give us another half hour to work and uh, get as much of our work day in and then um, at five o'clock relax before dinner and practice yoga. So um, if any of you are joining for the first time, my name is Christina Paston. I am the director of Mind Body Wellness at Tufts Dental School. And um, we come together on Tuesday nights to engage in um, Kripalu yoga, uh, the, the, the type of yoga that I've been trained in, which is classic Hatha yoga, but I can't say this enough uh, in yoga and in life. Uh, a practice where we come into ourselves with non-judgment and compassion. So this is about moving and breathing and relaxing through the practice um, and just allowing yourself to be however it is. If tonight you're seeming a little critchety crotchety or you're not stretching as much as you usually do, um, just let it all be. Um, breathe a little deeper and uh, let the practice come to you. So um, there are many definitions of yoga and one of my favorite definitions, definitions comes from the ancient Indian scripture, the Bhagavad Gita. And the Gita says that yoga is skillfulness in action. Yoga is skillfulness in action. And what this refers to is the yogi's capacity to act dynamically in ways that reliably produce positive life results. So what does it mean to act dynamically? From this context, it means that whatever action we are engaged in, we do it without the thought of the reward and that we bring our heart to the action and have a tranquil mind in that activity. So basically on our mats, we are moving, we're breathing, and we're moving our bodies very mindfully with, with skill. And so yoga was created as this physical and mental practice for us to live our life. And so when we're on our mat, it reminds us and brings us into that place that when we're off the mat, right, bringing skillfulness in our actions, can we be skillful when we're having a conversation with somebody? Maybe be skillful enough to know that we should stop in interrupting and be more, be a better listener. Right? Can we be skillful in the way we move around in the world? Can we walk slower? Can we be more deliberate in our actions? And so tonight, um, I'm going to guide you through a practice. And um, the inquiry that I'd like to propose to all of you is to, to move through this practice, um, it, through that definition of yoga, and be skillful, uh, skillful in your actions, and maybe... Um, cultivate how you can basically live yoga in this way in the world. 
So I am going to um, get my music on. Okay. So we're going to begin sitting down. Before we get into our centering, let's just open the practice by feeling rooted in our seat. Sit bones are planted into the mat. Very good feeling there. Um, grow tall in the spine. And let the hands come to the side and slowly lift the arms up to the sky. And when they meet overhead, as if you were pushing the air down to the earth, push the air down and then inhale, arms come up to the sky. Big inhale, press all of the air down to the earth. Let's do a few more of these. Big inhale, opening up the practice, opening up the lungs. One more time, inhale. And let the hands meet overhead this time. Pull them down through heart center. One hand comes to the heart, one hand comes to the belly. And if it's comfortable for you, close your eyes. And feeling the hands pressed against the body, connecting with the physical body, the outer layer of being. And just taking a little scan of the body and just notice how the body's feeling in this moment. Connecting now to breath, a second layer of being. Simply just noticing the breath coming in and out of the body. Also feeling it spread in the center of the body, feeling the belly and the chest rise between the legs. All with the exhale. Stay anchored in the breath, observing the landscape of the mind. And whatever that landscape is, rainy, cold, or hot and sunny, welcome it in and let it be with you as it is through the practice. Continuing to stay connected to breath and aligning the body, the breath, and the mind. The Bhagavad Gita is an ancient Indian text that tells the story of the warrior Arjuna and his divine mentor, Krishna. 
Narjuna is the greatest archer and warrior of his time, but in reality, he is as neurotic and full of every doubt and every fear you can imagine. And so this ancient text tells the story of how Arjuna's mentor Krishna taught him to embrace his sacred vocation to lead with his heart, to not focus on the fruits and live his life skillfully. The Gita is also a book that Gandhi, the only book actually that Gandhi took to prison and one of the few that Henry David Thoreau took to Walden Pond. So let's just stay rested in center with a few more of these three part breaths, inhaling into the belly, breath rising, lifting the collarbones and exhaling out all the breath. Inhale and exhale. And as you're ready, arms come down to the side. Let's lift the arms up again. Hands meet overhead, pull down through heart center, thumbs come to the chest. Take a moment of pause. And just notice what speaking for you. just embracing the body now beginning to settle into yoga and relax open the eyes and let the hands come out in front of you and find your way into table and when you're in table crossing the feet at the ankles and maybe bring the hands up just slightly a little bit more so you can just walk back and forth. Just sliding the back forward, shoulders propel over the wrists and then exhale, sits bones to the heels and just slowly rocking and rolling in this rhythmic flow. Arching the back, lift the chin, and exhale back. One more time. And then coming back into table. Extend the right leg out behind you. Let the toes plant into the earth and just Slowly rocking the toes back and forth, letting the heel lift and then press back toward the wall. Just feeling a gentle stretch in the calf muscle. And then swinging that right foot over to the left and take a look at the right toes over the left shoulder. Breathe into the right side body. And then coming back to table, left leg extends out behind you, plant the toes and then rocking back and forth, just warming up the left calf muscle. And swinging that foot over to the right and gaze over the right shoulder. Looking at the left toes. And then coming back to center, 
Extend the right leg out behind you. Feel strong in the fingers and the hands below you. Spread the fingers wide. Feel grounded in the left knee and the right palm of the hand. Extend the left arm out in front of you. So extending and lengthening through the left fingertips and the right heel. And as you do that, feeling a long line of energy going from the fingertips, to the bottom of the heel, breathing, staying grounded, tighten the core, simple balancing posture. So staying here or sweeping that left hand behind you, taking hold of the right ankle and lifting that left right foot up to the sky. And if you're wobbling, just find a drishti, a focal point on the earth and just stare at it. Staying focused, steady in breath. One more deep breath. Slowly and skillfully bend the right, the left hand and right leg out and then come back into table. Find your way into child's pose. Walk those hands out in front of you and let the forehead rest on the earth. Taking that moment of pause, connecting to sensations, noticing the difference between the arm and leg that just extended and and the other one didn't. And he'll come back into table. Right leg's going to lift to shoulder height and let's circle the right knee if you were painting. Circles on an imaginary wall in front of you. Warming up the hip joint, inhaling as it lifts, exhaling as it lowers. Always coordinating the breath with every movement. And then coming back down to table. Extend the left leg out behind you. Feeling steady in the right knee and the left hand. Extend the right arm out. Smooth and easy breaths, feeling strong in the core, finding your drishti. Staying here or sweeping that right hand behind, taking hold of the left ankle, lift the left foot up to the sky and breathe. When we balance and we breathe, it reminds us whenever we get off kilter, stay focused in the breath. We'll keep you balanced. Keep you on your way. One more breath. And then again, slowly send that left leg back, right arm forward. Press out through the left heel and extend and lengthen through the right fingertips. Energize. Right, bring as much life as you can to that right arm and the left leg. Exhale down. Find your way back into child's pose. Walk the hands out in front of you, forehead on the earth. Let it go. Inhale back into table. Left knee lifts to hip height. 
and then slowly begin drawing circles with the left knee. Do a few more circles. And then come back to table. Tuck the toes. Let's, let's transition into our first downward facing dog. Tuck the toes, spread the fingers wide. Weight will be right underneath the wrists and slowly lift the sits bones up to the earth, sorry, up to the sky and draw those heels down to the earth. Let the head hang. And taking pressure probably for the first time today off the neck. So just roll that head around. Just hang out here in dog for a minute. And as you do that, let's take some deep dirga breaths. Take a big inhale and send that belly toward the mat. And exhale out all the breath. Belly retracts to the spine. Inhale, send the belly to the mat. Exhale. One more time, big inhale. Breath comes up to the collarbones, exhale. So inhale and send the right leg up to the sky. And exhale, hinge forward, let the knee fly underneath the body, flying pigeon. And then inhale right leg's going to come back to the sky. Exhale, slide forward, right knee to the right elbow. Inhale, send it back up to the sky. Inhale, right knee's going to come and touch the left elbow. And it back to the sky. Bend the right knee and circle the right foot around the ankle. And then square the hips to the mat. Let the right leg come down and pedal out, pedal out the knees. And then bring both knees down to the earth. Again, find your child's pose, taking some pressure off the hands. Inhale, come up into hero's pose and let the arms pull the body up. Hands meet overhead, exhale down. Do that two more times, inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale down. Walk those hands back out in front of you. Tuck your toes, send the pelvis to the sky, downward facing dog. Press those heels down to the earth. And when you're ready, lift the left leg up to the sky. Bend the knee under the body, flying pigeon. Exhale, left leg goes back up to the sky. Inhale, left leg to left elbow. Shoot it to the sky. Now left knee to right elbow. And back up to the sky. Bend the left knee and circle the left foot around the ankle. And then bring that left foot back down, pedal out the knees. 
And this time we're gonna reverse it by walking the hands, this time back to the feet to come into a forward fold. And so forward fold, let's look at the feet that are right below the hips and just hang the head over the knees, slight bend to the knees, ankles are firm, feel the sacrum opening. And so we can hang here, just in a simple forward fold. Or we have two other variations we can try. We can take hold of the elbows and ragdoll, or try gorilla pose, where we slide our hands right underneath the soles of our feet and letting the toes rest on the palms and maybe wiggling the toes and giving the palms a little massage. And feeling a nice stretch in the hamstrings, the glutes, the shoulders, the scapula, and just let it out. Just inhale. And you know, I can't hear you guys, but if you were all in same room with me, I'd say, I want to hear you let something out, like, ha. Oh. Right? Sighing is such a natural way to release energy and stress. So just letting something go, an audible sigh. And when you're ready, release the hands or the elbows, light bend to the knee. Arms are gonna be by the sides of the legs. We're going to roll up one vertebrae at a time, super slowly. So skillfulness in action. How much presence can you, how much, can, how present can you be in this movement? When you are aligned and refined, let the arms come up to the sky. Palms meet overhead, pull down through heart center. And let the thumbs press against the chest. guide you through another movement called Serpa. And this is a really wonderful movement for spinal health. Um, you know, we're always looking for some type of yoga move to do in the morning, right? Starting your day with just one posture can really bring some transformation into the life and really bring some vitality to the body in the morning. So one that I like to do is called Serpa. So stand up tall, arms are gonna be by the sides and bring a slight bend to the knees. Lift the chest and chin as you start to bow toward the earth. Head's gonna to come to the knees and then we're gonna do that roll up one vertebrae at a time. Bend the knees, lift the chest and chin, begin to descend to the earth. Head bows to the floor and then spine pulls you up. And so let's just try this. This is a posture that hydrates all, posture movement, hydrates all of the discs in the spine. It moves the cerebral spinal fluid up and down. It brings the cerebral spinal fluid to the brain. And when we do that, it's been shown to increase our focus. So also something you can do in the middle of the day when you just need a little energy. So let's just do a few more rounds of this. And coming back to standing again, prayer mudra, Anjali mudra, thumbs to the chest bow. 
check in. Connect to that prana, the energy that's moving through the body. And so walk up to the front of your mat and let's engage in Tadasana, simple foundational posture of yoga that brings so much to the body. Look at the feet, slight bend to the knees, tuck the tailbone, root it to the earth, arms come to the side, and then slowly inhale the arms up to the sky. Extend and lengthen through the fingertips, bringing lots of energy. Soften the shoulders away from the ears. And so as much energy as you're bringing to those arms and fingertips now, can you engage a little bit more as you soften away from the ears? So it's this dual movement and bringing that dirga breath all the way up to the fingertips. Exhale. And then letting the hands come down to the earth. Inhale the arms up to the sky. I'm gonna stand looking toward you. Standing half moon, right hand takes hold of the left wrist the upper body away from the torso and arc over to the right. Inhale back to center. Switch the grip. Left hand pulls the right wrist up to the sky. Arc over to the left. Back to center. Hands are going to come down to shoulder length. Think into Utkatasana. Send those fingers out toward me. Toes are light. Or you can extend and lengthen the arms up to the sky. Again, being steady in breath. Ready, come back to standing. Take a moment to pause. Hands will come to the chest. And bow. So moving into Garudasana, Eagle Pose. Get steady in the right foot. Arms are going to come out to the side. And lift, lift the left knee. Cross it over the right. And we can do it two ways. The right toes can hang out right on the floor, right next door, and you can be supported eagle, which is completely fine. Or you can wrap the left foot around the back of the right calf. Arms are going to be out to the side. Inhale and then exhale. Left elbow is going to come over the right. Intertwine the fingers and the forearms. Send those eagle arms to the sky. Find your drishti to the side of your arms. And extend and lengthen those fingertips up to the sky. And staying here or bowing forward. And then inhaling down. Staying balanced. Release the arms, fly the eagle up to the sky. And then exhale, left 
leg comes down, cross the thumbs, engage the thumbs, and then open the fingers, press the palms of the hands into Garuda Mudra over the chest. Grounding the eagle. And if you're not at the front of your mat, go there now. Release the arms. Send the arms up to the sky. Exhale, bow forward. All 10 fingers come to the earth, bow the head. Hands will come on to the shins, flat back, gaze forward. Ardha Uttanasana. And then exhale, hands come down to the mat, send the right leg behind you. And setting up for warrior one. So looking at the feet, you want them on train tracks, right? So that they're equidistant apart so that you can rise up and be strong. Warrior one. Left knees over the left ankle. Shoulders are soft away from the ears and like Tadasana, fingers are engaged and reaching to the sky. Press that back heel down toward the earth and breathe. Back foot pivot, foot's parallel to the back edge of the mat. Arms extend, warrior two. Open the front gate. Left knee is going to track between the third and fourth toe. Back leg is strong, arms extend and lengthen out. Gaze is over the left middle finger. Shoulders are soft. Hands are gonna sweep behind the body and hands will interlace. Open the heart, gaze to the sky. And as you're ready, bow forward. Clasped hands will fly. Humble warrior. Smooth and easy breath. One more breath and then find your way back up into warrior two. Right arm's gonna lift to the sky. Left arm's gonna sweep behind and then right hand will come down just like in Gomukhasana. See if you can take hold of the hands behind you, square the body, arch your arms. When you're ready, release again, warrior two. Straighten the front leg. Left fingers are gonna slide over the left toes and find your way into triangle, trikonasana. And gaze can be at the floor, can be toward me, it can be to the sky. Big inhale, square the body over the left leg. Hands come to the earth, slight bend in the back knee. Pop the back foot forward and straighten the left leg pyramid. Bow, forehead to knee. Using the breath to stay steady and strong. Light bend in the left knee. I'm going to move now into standing half knee. Left hand's going to 
get out about six inches in front of the left foot with the left thumb in line with the left pinky. Right hand can be there for guidance as you pop that right leg off the earth. Find steadiness. Now you can stay here supported. Just letting that right hand just keep you here supported. That's fine. Or you can lift that right arm up to the sky. And you're standing half in. more breaths. Right hand's going to come down. Now square the hips to the mat, standing split. When you're ready, bend the right knee and let it find its way back. Let's standing next to the left foot. Take that moment in a forward fold. And then slowly inhale the arms up, reverse swan dive. Arms come up overhead, pull down through heart center, thumbs to the chest. Take a moment of pause. and relaxing, feeling the practice, most important, all while you watch and allow thoughts, feelings, and emotions to be what they are. When you're ready, open your eyes. Let's ground into the left foot. Do eagle on the left side now. So feel that foot grounded into the earth. Arms are going to come up to the side, lift the right knee up, hip height, and then let it cross over the left. Find your eagle, supported eagle, or send it the right foot behind the left calf. And then inhale, right arm's going to come under the left, elbows cross. Forearms intertwined, send the eagle arms up to the sky. And then big inhale as you exhale, bow the eagle. Keeping centered in your drishti, keeping tight in the core. And that sweet spot between the right amount of focus. Not too much, not too little. That's how we stay balanced. A little way. Come back up. Let the arms come out to the side. Fly the eagle. Let the eagle land. Hands come across. Engage those thumbs. Open the fingers. Press the palms. Take a bow, Garuda Mudra. And just connect to the vitality of the body, how these balancing poses when we bring such focus and breath, how it rejuvenates and restores the body. And if you're not at the front of your mat, move yourself up there. And then release the arms, send them up to the sky. Exhale, bow forward, all 10 fingers come to the earth, bow the head. Hands come to the shins, flat back. And then all 10 fingers come to the toes, come to the earth. Send the left foot behind you. And find, get steady in your warrior one, rise up. Sink into that front knee. 
make sure that right knee does not go past the ankle right on top stack it up press down through the left heel shoulders are soft lift and lengthen through the fingers and when you're ready give it the back foot so it's parallel to the back edge of the mat find warrior two Open the front gate, track the knee, see where it goes, soften the shoulders. Gaze is over the right middle finger. Dignified posture, where we're engaged but soft. As you're ready, sweep the hands behind you, interlace the fingers, open the chest. Inhale, then hinging at the hips, leading with the forehead, bow, humble warrior. Arms are going to come up, right arm up to the sky, left hand behind you. Again, let the hands, fingers find themselves if they can. Open the chest, arch your arms. And then release. Find your warrior two. Straighten that front leg, slide the right hands over the toes and find your triangle. And making sure the breath is always coming up to the fingertips. Bend that front knee, hands will come down to the mat so that you can slowly pop that back foot forward a little bit. Straighten the, the front leg, bow in pyramid. Feeling that stretch in the quadriceps all the way down to the calf. When you're ready, slight bend in the right knee as your right hand finds six inches. The thumb will find a line six inches in front of the right pinky. And either stay steady with the left hand to guide that left leg up. And then when you're ready, keeping your hand on the mat if you need support or inhaling the left arm up to the sky. Find your drishti. Solid core. Smooth and easy breath. And when you're ready, right hand will come down, square the hips, standing split. And then bending the knee in, left foot meets the right, and then slowly come up. Baby back bend, hands meet overhead, pull down through the center line, thumbs to the chest. Inhale the arms up to the sky. Exhale, bow forward, hands come to the earth. Let's find ourselves on the earth.
And we're gonna come down onto our backs and set up for bridge pose. So knees are bent, feet are flat on the earth. We want the knees to be about two fists apart at the most. So as if you were holding a grapefruit through um, between your knees, hands will be flat on the earth beside you. Inhale and press the pelvis up to the sky. So knees and pelvis are now aligned. And then walk the hands, the arms underneath the body and then clasp the hands under the body and keep walking the arms together so scapulae are very close and lift that pelvis to the sky. Draw the knees together. So again, pretend that you're holding that grapefruit so you're feeling the glutes engaged, quads engaged. Knees are drawing together like magnets. Bringing in that big deer, good breath. Inhale, send the belly to the sky. Exhale. Stretching the shoulders, opening the chest. Let's take a few more breaths here. And as you're re ready, release the hands. Hands be flat on the ground. Slowly roll down one vertebrae at a time. And get down to the earth. Pull the knees into the chest, rock side to side. Let the knees and the ankles touch. Arms come out to the side. And let the knees and ankles roll over to the right. And the head will roll over to the left. And then keeping the knees and the ankles glued together, send them over to the left, head rotates over to the right. And then coming back to center, pull the knees into the chest, rock side to side. Getting ready for your rest. Arms are out to the side. Legs are pulling away from the midline. Press the head into the floor. Lift the upper back. Slide the scapulae toward each other. Lower. Feeling pressure off the lower back. Off that sternum. Taking sure it's off the floor. Balance is more in the tail area. And just settling into your rest. Taking the breath deep. Body heavy. Not a muscle soft. Body relaxing into your 
Shavasana. Feeling the feet relaxed. The ankles relaxed. Shins and calves relaxed. The knees relaxed. The thighs relaxed. Hips and pelvis relaxed. Belly relaxed. Ribs relaxed. heart soft and open. Shoulders relaxed. Neck of the face relaxed. Eyes relaxed. The forehead relaxed. Scalp relaxed. of Shavasana, I'd like to share these words from Henry David Thoreau. I went to the woods because I wished to live deliberately, to find only the essential facts of life and see if I could not learn what it had to teach and not when I came to die discovered that I had not lived. You must live in the present. Launch yourself on every wave. Find your eternity in each moment. Fools stand on their island of opportunities and look toward another land. There is no other land. There is no other life but this. Beginning now to deepen the breath. Drawing awareness back into the body. Bring 
doing some waking movements to the fingers and the toes. Slowly roll yourself onto one side in a fetal position and just take a moment there. Keeping your eyes closed, slowly finding your way back to a seated, comfortable position with the eyes closed. Your hands and Anjali Mudra pressing the thumbs against the sternum. And bowing to yourself. Bowing to yourself in gratitude for giving yourself an hour of self-care, an hour to be with your breath and your body and your thoughts and your sensations and all the amazing things that come along with this brilliant body of yours. And I bow to all of you in gratitude for showing up and letting me guide you in this ancient practice and being your yoga teacher and guide. I bow to all of you in gratitude. Namaste. teaching yoga next week so when you don't get a announcement for me uh, I'm involved in two conferences next week so um, I will be back in two weeks um, but meditation will be happening this Thursday so um, I look forward to seeing you the reading I uh, read tonight is in the chat so if any of you want to revisit that So the link to the recording is going to be uh, in my YouTube, which I could maybe find that for you right now. Um, I'll put that in there. Just need like a day to get it on there. Uh, the link to my YouTube channel where I put my um, recorded classes every week. <laughs> 